Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today I'm going to show you something really cool. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, look at histograms and I'm going to show you how to create histograms in Excel really quickly just like this one so you can quickly look at the distribution of your data by bins. Binning would be each of these buckets, right? And you want to see is it a normal distribution, you know, like a uh, bell curve? Is it biased? Is it skewed? Is it leaning one direction or the other like it is here? So it gives you a lot of great information really quick on your data, especially sales uh, data or uh, charity donation data, stuff like that. So what I've got here today is I've got a real business case for you. We've got, uh, this is week number right here, this first column here. So what I've got is by week for 2020 is data for a company, a small mom and pop operation, little farm that sells their uh, their. Uh, peppers and their grow, you know their uh, herbs and tomatoes and things like that at the local farmers market so I've got their data for every week of 2020 and this is their total sales for that week so it's by week total sales transactions you know, how many people came in and bought it how many units did they buy so what did they buy they bought a, you know like a pepper plant did they buy four tomatoes did they buy uh, a bag of herbs or something it's all in here for that so you get total sales transactions units average basket so what was the average items if i want to pull it out here so you can see it a little better and then the average basket amount right so i've got you know how many average items did they have in their basket for that week for all the customers did they have four did they have ten did they have two we could see that here and then the average basket amount Right, so we've got that. So what is their top spend? Well, sometimes they maybe they sold some lemon plants, some uh, big potted plants, and those can get kind of expensive, especially if they had some house plants, which they do sell. So, you know, they could quickly be up there. Uh, and then a lot of people just bought things like a bag of um, uh, oregano or a bag of uh, basil. Basil is one of their top selling herbs, and they sell it for like a dollar for a little bag of basil. Um, so that's how that breaks out there and what I want to show you is how we're going to come up with this histogram right here so what I do is I can take and create a new one so let's go up here and show you once you have the data like this right I've got again look at it here I've got week number total sales transactions units average basket item and average basket amount now we're not graphing week number by sales or week number by units or average basket or average basket amount that's not what a histogram is about that would be your regular bar chart or a line graph. In this case, we want distributions. So I'm gonna take something that's interesting to these people here that they'd wanna see. So for instance, their average basket amount. Maybe I wanna see how this bins out. How many people are at $90? How many people are at $5? How many people are at $10? And we can see it by the bins. So what you would do is you'd go here, let's click on a new cell here, and do insert, right? And what I wanna do is I wanna select this row so I want to select it down to the bottom okay so I've got 30 weeks of data I've selected in here and then I go right in here into the insert and then see this recommended charts in here we have what's called histogram right here it's called statistics chart now it used to be called histogram and you'll click on this and it brings up this where you can see your histogram your which is exactly what I want right here you could do a box and whisker or other things but I'm basically going to look at the histogram so I want to hit this and initially it comes up as just a few see that I've got in this case it decides that the default best look at this per Excel is five bins right so we got 39 cents to 40 almost 44 dollars here then we got $44 to $86, $86 to $129, $129 to $172, there was nobody in there. And then $172 to $215, so it looks at five bins. But just because it's got five bins does not mean that their default is what I want. So let's bring this down here and show you what I'm doing here. So let's bring this over this way a little bit, put it like that one, okay? Now, if I want to change this, which is what I'm going to do, what I would want to do is I want to click on this, and what I want to do is look at the chart type, right? So I got to go in here, right? And what I want to do is I want to format this chart, right? So I want to format the chart area. Okay, so now that we've done that, I don't know why it blanked out on me there, but that's fine. So what we got to do is we got to look at this. Once we hit format the chart area, 
we go up here and we don't want to click on these yet. We want to click on this chart options, right? And we want to do the horizontal because that's this, right? The horizontal axis. So we're going to look at that. We clicked on that and then we want to go to this last one here. See these three here? That's color, that's the font and effects. And then we want the axis options, which is this guy right here. And then under this is the axis options. And we go in here, you could have it as automatic. You could have it as number of bins, overflow bin. Um, what we want to do is we want to look at, we want to take it off of automatic. And you can hear my dog in the background. He's having a drink of water out there. So it's not me drinking like that's my dog. Anyway, so on this one, you can look at the number of bins. So let's take that. And by default, it's got it at five, right? And it's telling you the bin width up here. We don't have to worry about that. Let's look at the number of bins. So what happens now? We can see right here, it's obviously skewed over here. There's none here none here and there's a little bit over here what happens when we take it from five to let's say eight right so we hit enter look what happens we got eight it's still heavily skewed to the left now it's dropped to 23 dollars remember it was about 43 dollars or something now it's 23 dollars we've got some flowing over here at 23 to 47 right none then we got a few here then none here and then a few here that may not represent our data enough. We have such a big amount here. We want to break down this bin, this this first bin a little bit. Maybe reduce down to ten bucks or fifteen bucks. So what we want to do is make that instead of eight. What if we make it ten? No, not eight hundred ten. That'd be terrible. Let's make it ten. And see how it's starting. To, this one's starting to grow a little bit. We now got down to nineteen dollars and ten cents. It's still too big. There's too many people in there. Let's go and bring that down a little bit. It does tell me it's heavily skewed. We got a lot of people buying. Uh, smaller price baskets. So people that are a basket of like 10 bucks, five bucks, something like that. They're buying a few things, but not the big things. So that could be something where maybe they need to put the bigger, more expensive stuff out front and put the cheaper stuff in the back and maybe try and push that a little harder to sell the bigger stuff. Could be. Okay. So let's take that up from 10 to, I don't know, 15. Let's do that. So once we hit 15, now we got to bring it down this way a little bit because the numbers here aren't showing exactly the way we want to see them. So let's bring it down some more so we can read everything there. Bring it down a little bit more. There we go. Now from here, we can see this, right? We can see it's 39 cents to $12, close to that. This one has at 10. Um, we could do some more bins. If we wanted to, we could do 18 bins. Let's try that. There we go. Now see what I got is exactly the same thing as above. So it's the number of bins you have breaks down. Now that's to ten dollars. If I want to break it down to uh, under ten, we have to have twenty. Let's try that and see what that does. That's twenty bins and it starts to bring them out this way a little bit. So now it's under ten. So we got a still a big portion of people. This is where you start to get more information, right? So I've left it. If I left it originally at those five bins, you really can't see a whole lot. The bins are too big, right? It's forty dollars and under, or forty-three dollars and under. Now you can start to see we got a lot of people at nine dollars and under, but we also have a good number of people between nine and nineteen dollars, and then it starts to drop off after there. So it, it's really in, you know informational or a really a great resource of information to see how your data is distributed. In this case, we got a lot of buyers with small baskets, so maybe what we need to do is do something to get their email addresses right and then maybe get them on a mail or an email campaign and just like send them an email and let them know you know we've got new items at or that these people have new items at their uh, uh, for sale at the next week's um, farmers market and remind them of where their table is there and maybe give them a coupon of you know t for them coming out give them uh, a dollar off of five dollars or a dollar off of ten if they spend ten dollars there so if these guys or maybe give them five dollars off 20 to take them from this right and take them instead to here right push them far this way and then these guys might go to here so it would increase their sales bring them back reward them for being a good customer and it probably wouldn't cost them that much to do something like that maybe if it does if they've shown some items that have higher expense to them usually they're not but if they did uh then they could uh you know try and pick some a different idea but regardless it doesn't matter this so this is your histogram change the title here you know you can make it whatever you want call it histogram for farmers market 2020 oops not 2022 all right 
So that's basically in a nutshell how you do it and you're looking for the distribution you want to see the skew in this case it's highly skewed to the left which is not necessarily a bad thing all that means is we have a lot of customers at the low end but we do have some customers at the high end not many but we do have some that have some big baskets maybe they're buying big you know 10 gallon um, uh, lemon trees or uh, maybe they're buying some uh, rarer or um, bigger bouquets of flowers or rare um, uh, indoor uh, plants things like that that might be a little bit more on the higher price end and down here you got a lot of people buying their typical tomatoes and cucumbers and things like that maybe garlic maybe some uh, uh, ginger and stuff so anyway this was to show you how to quickly take and I could have easily done you know, instead of doing the basket amount, I could have done the basket items and looked at that for bins or looked at the units or transactions or the total sales. In this case, I think the average basket amount would be one of the most meaningful pieces here. How can we get them to increase their basket? Because if they buy more stuff, that company would, or that small family, their little uh, table at the uh, farmer's market, they would make more money. Simple as that. So this is what a histogram can do. And... Uh, I showed you exactly how to do it, how to bin it out, how to grow your bin, or how to, you know, look for different things. When you, it's neat how you, when you take it and you expand it out and you add more bins, how you'll get more information out of it, just like we did here. Well, thanks for watching. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. We've got some more great videos like this coming out. Please stay tuned and look, be free, or feel free to look at all the other great videos we have on our channel. They're not just Excel. There's stuff on R. We're going to be putting stuff in Python out there soon. You got all kinds of Alteryx, um, Power BI, all kinds of great stuff for you in data science and data analytics. And it's all 100% free. It will never be uh, a charge for any of this. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and have a great day. Thank you.